Here now to discuss Dave Marcus, New York Post columnist. D Dave, this is flat out censorship. Uh, it's insane. And I mean, the important thing to remember here is that there's no violation of rules. That there are no rules. Um, what happened and, and what always happens is somehow this group got flagged either by users or an algorithm. It shows up in front of some, you know, 23 year old with a complicated haircut and pronouns in their bio. And they say, oh, you know, this looks conservative. We better ban it. Um, you know, it happens every day on Facebook and, and myriad other social media platforms. Sometimes they correct it and they say, oh, that was a mistake. That was done in error. But by then, you know, the damage is done. And you and I both know it only happens in one direction. But it, they're opening the, they're asking for it. These companies, if they don't stop this, they're asking for regulation. I don't believe in the wisdom of government, clearly, but they're asking for much greater regulation from Washington and other nations, but also to be broken up. But maybe the, the market forces will just th put the hammer down on Facebook on its own, Facebook in one day, what it lost one million daily users globally, and it, um, it announced in its uh, quarterly earnings report, and it lost more than a quarter of its value in one day. So whether it's the government or the free market, the chickens are, well, going to take a all over Facebook. Yeah, well, you know, according to my 11-year-old, Facebook is for old people, so I, I don't know if that's, you know, part of the, the problem as well. But, um, yeah, look, I, I mean, you're right. They're literally asking for regulation. I mean, Facebook has TV ads where they say, please, please, government, regulate us, because th this, is, this is something that's way bigger uh, than their ability to handle it. They're, they're, they're simply not in a position to judge what is misinformation and what isn't and what should be on their platform or, or, or what shouldn't. Um, and thus far, they, they've done a horrible job at it. So, you know, somehow we, I think, do need government to step in and, and set some rules if this is going to be the new public square. Well, think about Facebook censored a new, it was a New York Post opinion piece raising the issue that the COVID, that coronavirus came from a lab in Wuhan, but that was censored. Over and over again, the information that these media companies have peddled to the American people was wrong. Yes, I mean, you know, if, if you want to know whether a story in the New York Post is true, just try to figure out if social media has banned it, and then you'll know that it is. Um, you know, th this has happened time and time again. Uh, th Again, I, I don't think the problem is even that they don't want to fix it. I really just think they don't know how to fix it. Um, but it needs to be fixed because these truckers have every right in the world to try to organize against the, 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 the mandates, just as has happened in Canada. So, I mean, the, the fact that they're being censored and, and not allowed to do it, it it's deeply un-American. Well, I remember the pots and pans crowd from the beginning, you know, living here in New York City, which you do as well, uh, as toward the beginning of the pandemic, the pots and pans crowd, banging pots every night for the healthcare workers, the frontline workers. Well, our stores would have been empty back then if not for the truckers. We would not have been able to get groceries and comestibles and our daily things that we need to live our lives every day without those very truckers. So where is that crowd with their pots and pans standing up for the very people who were out there delivering things when there wasn't a vaccine? No, I mean, absolutely, and not for nothing. I mean, as much as Joe Biden and, Just, and Justin Trudeau like to run around talking about how many shots they got in arms, how did that vaccine get to all those locations, right? It was the truckers. The, the truckers brought the vaccine to every corner of the United States and Canada and all of these places. So you're absolutely right. To, to treat them with disdain at this point um, is really a disservice to them. And look, they're in a position of power because we have a supply chain problem. You know, we don't have enough truckers. So they're really in a position right here to make sure that they're listened to, and I hope that they are. It requires the companies that they work for um, to stand up for them as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and hopefully we continue to see that. I, I think all of us are seeing a, a, a corner turned, and I don't like to say that because I, I think for two years we felt that, that maybe this was happening. But, 
Over the past week or so, even on the left, I think we've seen the frustration with, with the, the COVID restrictions are, mm -hmm. are reaching a, a fever pitch, and hopefully the truckers can help us finally move past that. What, uh, what makes you say that? Like, what have you seen in the last couple of weeks that makes you say that? I, I, think, I see more people just not wearing a mask. It's like they've been, you know, I've had COVID twice in the last, like, 11 months, so I'm not going to wear a mask unless somebody tells me to. But what do you? What makes you say yeah. that you think that we've turned a corner on this? I think we've seen some some things in outlets like the New York Times. I think we've heard some things on NPR. I think the Atlantic was was really an early adopter on mm -hmm. the left um, of, of really sending a warning to the Democratic Party of like if, if you want to avoid a, a complete and utter shellacking in November of 2022, you better start getting stuff back to normal. And I I, I hope. Uh, that that message is, is maybe starting to get through. Dave, good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you again very soon, I hope.